Eric back of the naturopath. Thanks for coming back. Trying to get this microphone to sit properly. Got it. My hair okay? Yeah, it's all good. Now, let's talk a bit about bacteria. I've got a question here from a subscriber. I have Prevotella copri rich blastocystis hominis. So Prevotella are a type of bacteria like blastocystis. <clears throat> Prevotella live in the intestine, in, a, in the small intestine, I believe, predominantly large intestine, uh, whereas the blastocystis like to live in the stomach, but you can also get them a bit further down. So are there any special precautions or dietary changes I should make in dealing with Prevotella copri? Well, if we have a look at bacteria, there are many types of bacteria that live in the gut, and it's all about the balance. Some people will have more of certain types of bacteria, depending on the food they like to eat, and other people will have more of other types of bacteria. So no two people have got identical microbiome. They're probably like snowflakes. There are a lot of them out there. So bacteroides are a huge, big genus, a big, big group of bacteria. Huge, and then we can we can sort of look at different subgroups of bacteroides, uh, bacteroidets, and prevotella. So two sort of groups. Prevotella tend to be bacteria that like fiber, especially vegetable fibers. So they're like veggie munching kind of bacteria. The bacteroidets, however, are more the 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 the, the gourmet sort of bacteria. They will have meat and fats and sort of all sorts of things. They like fat and meat. They can break those down. There are different types of prevotella. Many types. And like yeast, you know, <clears throat> most people have got some amount of candida in their gut. Not every person, but most people will have candida there. But remember, it's kept under control, okay? We keep the bad guys under control with guys in suits, you know, blue suits and guns and stuff like that. It's getting a bit out of hand today, isn't it? All this crime and all this sort of policing and stuff. But look, the immune system is no different. It can come down real hard on bacteria and cause excessive inflammation. A bit like police brutality we get now about, you know, people, all this racism we're getting now. And, well, we don't get racism in our immune system, but we can get a very powerful overactive immune response. If we've got too much Prevotella copri, for example, we can be a little bit more prone to getting autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis. But the copra is also linked um, with balancing blood sugar. So I believe when you've got a certain amount of prevotella, uh, you need it for balancing blood sugar. But again, when you step over that mark, you could get, again, possibly a form of dysglycemia or a poor blood sugar balance. I'm telling you, the bacteria do everything in your gut. They control how you think, how you feel. They control your immune system. And yet so many people will just treat the, the gut as a dumping yard for all kinds of foods which then end up creating a huge, big dysbiotic problem further down. Right? And this is part of the, the reason why so many people get sick. They're not eating the right type of food. So, because we're not feeding the bacteria what they want, right? So different types of Prevotella, for example, when you've got large amounts, if you look at the studies, can predispose you to certain diseases. Multiple sclerosis is even linked up with a type of Prevotella and also serious septic um, chronic infections of the gut, vaginal infections, throat infections, mouth infections, like 40% plus of people with dental, rotten teeth, dental caries, have got certain types of Prevotella much too high. So now you can see the importance of keeping the gut bacteria balanced. But how the hell do we do that? Well, not by eating Kentucky Fried Chicken Wicked Wings with a can of Coke. That's not how we're going to get the bacteria right. You guys are probably sick of me beating this drum about eating healthy food, right? So many uh, pictures you see on Instagram of kale smoothies and, 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 you know, people showing you and telling you all this kind of food you eat, but who the hell's going to drink a kale smoothie? I prefer having a nice salad um, instead. But the point we're making is balanced diets with good amounts of vegetables and fruits and lean meat seem to be the most effective way for getting a good microbiome. <clears throat> so, what advice can I give to someone? Any special precautions or dietary changes? Well, the main thing is, it's a bit again like the good guys and the bad, bad guys. People who want to eat, um, get better and eat a healthy diet, to me, it's not much different from um, understanding moral law. You don't go out there and bash people and stab people and shoot people and expect to get away with it. And it's the same with you don't go in there and bashing and stabbing and shooting the gut 
with all these artificial sugars and chemicals and toxins that we, we tend to be eating, but by consuming natural foods, we're giving the gut what it needs to build good bacterial health, regardless of what name you give some bacteria. If you eat the wrong food, like if you follow the wrong path and follow the wrong friends, you'll probably end up in, in a jail cell somewhere, you know? No different from in, ending up in a hospital bed prematurely by eating the wrong kind of foods. So we shouldn't have to spell out exactly what type of foods because you know yourself when you've got that can of soda drink in your hand that it's not the right thing to have. You know yourself when you're eating greasy takeaway food, it's not the right type of food to feed the bacteria up. So the only precautions you need, in my opinion, are being careful the company you keep when you go out eating food. Because some people just eat anything. They're like great white sharks. They'll sink their teeth into anything they'll find. <clears throat> so when you're a bit more discerning and your friends and family know that, you know, without being the food police to them, because people get sick of the food police hanging around. So eventually, I think you'll understand, uh, you know, the law between what you eat and how your gut responds. And you'll do that over a period of time, like most of our subscribers have, by understanding what they eat influences their, their gut health and consequently their entire health in every single way. So if you want to know what foods to eat, please watch some of my videos on foods to find inflammation, for example. Um, you know, foods that build gut bacteria. Because there are thousands of videos on this channel now all about eating. So eating the right food, good gut bacteria. Eating the wrong food, bad gut bacteria. That's what it boils down to. And I particularly find this relevant for autoimmune disease. Every single case I've seen autoimmune disease was either drug-induced or food-induced. Now, genetics play a role because people obviously come from family lines and there'll be certain bacteria passed on there as well. I will grant that, but I still believe in the environment, the milieu of the person. And when the environment's good, even if they've got a crappy background, they can still become a very strong and healthy, vibrant adult, you know, particularly when they feed this up with what it needs. Thanks for tuning in.